Hey everybody, it's Jochen Haydn, and I'm back with another tutorial video. Um, and this one's inspired by my recent disaster of a of a Japanese campaign that I started. And if you're following what I'm doing on that, I'm restarting it because I did so poorly um, with the start. Uh, my carrier deployment was poor, and even worse, my division um, divisional deployment was even bad. And if you're new like me, you might be asking yourself, well, what are you talking about with divisions? Well, okay, this is something I did not realize or fully understand when I started. Uh, the Japanese, in both Scenario 1 and Scenario 2, only have 12 unrestricted divisions that are on the map at the beginning of the campaign. And with that, not all of them are actually formed up. So, for one, I didn't think about this and two I didn't realize it and three I didn't even know where they were or what they were um, and I didn't find this out until after I had already started and one of my uh, friends and, and advisors Mr. Desert Wolf you may know him from the campaign I covered he was asking me hey so where are your divisions and what are you going to do with them and I, <laughs> and I said what are you talking about and he's like oh man uh, we got a problem and then he, me and him spent a couple hours going around the map and finding all the stuff. And what I had done was basically take the the bits and pieces of all of my divisions and scatter them into the wind to the point where it would have taken me weeks to recombine them. So you may be asking yourself, well, why do you want to recombine them? Well, you don't have to necessarily. But the way the game engine works and the way ground combat works in this game Larger units tend to do better than smaller ones. Okay, for example, let's take a look at this 104th Division. Um, this thing has basically a number of regiments, brigades, and units built into it. It all combined to make this one homogenous unit. So this homogenous unit, the game works be It calculates ground combat better when you have a big homogenous unit like this, right? It has more punching power than if you were to take all of its individual pieces and use them in the same hex in the same way. Each individual unit doesn't have the same effect as this fully formed division. That's one reason. The second one is for just logistics and, and tracking and administration. Having dozens of these regiments scattered all over the place and trying to keep them together gets difficult. Right? Instead of having six or seven pieces of a division, you can just have one. Right? And you can always take this division and divide it. Right? So now you have three pieces of this division divided into thirds, which are still stronger than the individual parts of them. Right? And you can split them up this way. But whenever you're ready and they're back together again and you haven't upgraded anything separately, you just click rebuild unit. And your vision becomes homogenous again. It's easier to deal with them like this. So the next thing I want to help you know, if you're a Japanese player for the first time and don't know what you're starting with, let me show you what your starting divisions are. Because I didn't know this until it was a bit too late. So check this out. Let me see if I can find it here. That's the one I want. Okay, so this is a little uh, notepad that I made uh, for myself based on a lot of research and time. Um... And the help of Desert Wolf. So these are the 12 divisions that you start the map with. Either with Scenario 1 or Scenario 2. These are the 12 unrestricted divisions. Unrestricted means that they're assigned to a headquarters that has no movement penalties or, or restrictions from taking them and moving them anywhere on the map. Right? You could take the Imperial Guards Division if you wanted to. Put it on a transport and send it all the way to Australia. And there would be nothing stopping you. The game has tons of divisions. The Japanese have quite a few divisions, right? But many of them are locked behind restricted headquarters. For example, this 10th division at Kaya Muse, if I'm saying that right, is attached to the Quangton Army, which means it needs to stay in the Quangton Army area. It can't be way, it can't be shipped out by ship or anything. It has to stay over here. Now you can technically move it into China, but it has to stay on land. And if you're playing house rules that prevent you from doing that, you'd have to pay political points. And I don't know if you've looked at the cost for a uh, a division. Yeah, let me show you how much that would cost you. If I wanted to buy out this 10th division so that I could use it elsewhere, right? Um, 1,664 uh, points. 
I, that's a lot of points. I don't have that many political points. It would take me a month of saving up just to do this one division. So, let me show you what your divisions are when you start. Okay. You have the Imperial Guard, 2nd, 4th, 5th, and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, here's the deal. Not all of these divisions are formed up. So, let me show you the ones that are actually on the map. So, we'll start with the Imperial Guards division. Uh, let's see here. Right here. It's at Batam Bang. Okay. So there's one full division right now. And you can move this one anywhere you want. Okay. So that one is uh, on map at Battenberg. I'm typing this out. The second division. Let's see here. The second division is not on the map yet. It's in pieces. So how would you even figure this out? Well, I just so happen to know where some of it's at because I did the work for you to find it. If you want to know where the pieces of your division are at, you need to find its subcomponents and then you can piece, piece it together from there. When you see an asterisk over here in this column that says type, the asterisk means this is part, this is a piece of a larger unit that can be combined eventually. So if I click on the 16th regiment here, it says it is an part of the second division. Now, if I want to know where all the pieces of the second division are at, I click here, and it will tell me exactly where they're at. So we know that some of it is loaded on a task force 124, three pieces of it are at Sendai, and a another piece of it is at Iwaki. So in order to combine this division to make it whole, you would have to do two things. Uh, first, you would have to combine these units to turn them into the 4th Infantry Regiment, okay? And already they're split up. And secondly, after that, you would have to take all these pieces and put them in the same hex, and then, on top of that, they have to be part of the same uh, headquarters. In this case, you need to pick which one. So... Part of these guys are part of Southern Army Headquarters. You cannot combine a unit that just has different headquarters. They have to have the same one. So once you combine these three, you would need to purchase them out and reassign them to the 16th Army. And, that point, and at that point, you can divide them up. So a lot of your divisions start out this way. Okay. So the 2nd Division is not together, and you would have to combine it and then change the headquarter to make it all the same. Either you put the rest of these to Southern Army, which would be cost prohibitive in political points, or you take this smaller unit and buy it out against 16th Army. Okay? So, 2nd Division is scattered, but the bulk of it is at Sendai. So, I'll write that on my little uh, sheet over here. I'm keeping that on my second monitor, so. Let's see. Split at Sendai. All right. The 4th Division is the next one. And the 4th Division is fully formed and ready to go. That is located at Osaka, Kyoto. The 4th Division, see it's all put together and ready to fight. So that's at Osaka. The 5th Division is not together. Let's find out where that one's at. Um, I think it's... Let me find it. 5th Infantry Regiment. Oh, no. That's not what I want. Um, let's see. What are the pieces of the 5th? Ah, uh, dang it. Hold on. I'm going to pause and figure this out so I don't have to waste your time. One second. So, let's do this. All units. The 5th Division. Let me show you where that one's at. So many units here. Jeez. 5th Engineer Regiment. Okay, check this out. 5th Division is scattered all over the dang place. Okay? Now, they're already all to the same headquarters, but they're not all together. So, now you, would, you notice that they're at different task forces, right? Task Force 91 is at Samal. Task Force 125 is at small, 92 at small, 97, 
and 91. Okay, so the 5th Division is actually in the same hex. They're just loaded on different task forces on different ships. And these could all be put together and sailed to one direction and recombined at their destination. Or you could unload them at Sama and then put them together if you wanted to. So let's write that down. So the 5th Division, Sama. Sama are multiple task forces. 16th Division. This one's a little easier, I believe. I th here, 16th Division. This is, should be the one that's heading to... Nope. This should be the one that's heading to... Yes! Alright, now, okay, this is a fun one. The 16th Division is on Task Force 107 primarily, which is here at Omami Oshima. But you also have a piece of it down here at Babel. And then you have another piece of it, the Mura Detachment, which is also at Babel. So you have the, the Mura and the Kimura Detachment, which make the 33rd Regiment, right? And then from there, well, that's not what I wanted to do. And from there, you would need to combine these all. So this is typically the division that gets used in in Luzon, right? Or in, in the Philippines. But as you can see, it's all split up into multiple different uh, task forces, and you would need to recombine it somewhere. Fortunately, they're all assigned to the same headquarters. So the 16th Division can be recombined somewhere in the Philippines. But again, as you see, they start in different places, and that's what makes it so hard. So let's put... Task Force 107 at Takao, also Babel. Okay, 18th Division. Let's find that one now. Eighteenth Division. I know this may seem kind of long, guys, but if you're new and you need to know how to play Japan, it's just probably a good exercise for us to uh, to go through this and figure all this out. Okay, 18th Division. Let's take a look at that. Some of it is at Sama. Task Force 108 is also at Sama. 85, Sama. Okay, so all of this is also at Sama and can be recombined. See, they're all part of the same headquarters. They can be recombined anywhere. The default location for them is going into Kotobaru. All right. So 18th Division is at is split at Sama. Okay, the 21st Division is a little easier it's over here at shanghai again assigned to southern army so this one could be packed up on a ship and sent anywhere you want if you wanted to now granted that's going to be a problem because it's a significant part of the garrison for shanghai so if you were to just pack up that division and sail it away without replacing the garrison here you would start destroying your base and losing political points so before you do that you need to plan accordingly and bring in some garrison units to replace this but at least you know where it's at now right so 21st Division is at Shanghai. 33rd Division. Let's check this one out. 33rd Division is formed up and ready to go at Nagasaki. Again, assigned the 15th Army. It's built. It's ready. It's got a lot of experience. So we'll put 33rd Division is at Nagasaki. Now, let's take a look at the 38th Division, which should be right here. The 38th Division is formed up as part of 16th Army and is marching or should be marching on Hong Kong. So we'll just put 16th is at Hong Kong. It's not yet, but it, it sh typically people use it there. So once you take Hong Kong with this unit, you can use it anywhere you want. You can pack it up and sail it away or you can leave it in China. That's up to you. But it's, it's fully formed up and able to be used. Okay, 48th Division. So this is actually one of your best divisions. And unfortunately, this one's scattered all over the place, just like the rest. So let's find it. 48th Division. There it is. 48th Division. Okay. Uh, maybe it's not as bad off as I thought. Okay. So a lot of it's at Pescadores, which is here just north of Takao in the, uh, the Strait of Taiwan. All right. And then you have the Kano Debt. Oops, that's not what I wanted to do. Let me go back. Uh, this, you gotta love 20-year-old game interfaces, right? Okay, so 
some of it's on a task force at pescadores and the other part of it is also there so you could conceivably take this this task force and combine it up and send it wherever you want it to go and then wherever it landed you would recombine the second formosa regiment and from there you would build up your division again all right so now we know that the 48th division is split at pescadores all right the 55th division. Let's take a look at that one. We're almost out of divisions here, guys. 55th Engineer Regiment. Okay, 55th division is, and this one is split up quite a bit. Some of it's at Battenberg, Battenbang. Okay, so let's put Battenbang. Uh, and then you have some on, oh, look at this. Oh, this sucks. Okay, then you have some at Chichijima. We'll put Task Force 20 at Chi Chi Jima, which is kind of a pain because it's really far away from where the rest of the division is located. Then you have some on Task Force 93, which is at Saigon. Task Force 93, Saigon. And then you have Task Force 94 at Saigon and Task Force 95 at Saigon. And these are these... Um, battalions here that you would combine up to make this infantry regiment and from there you would combine it into the 55th division if you want to do that so it's at Batambang, Chichijima and Saigon All right, I'm writing that down on my list and the last division that we're going to look at for the Japanese is the 56th division and that guy is at Babel. So part of it's at Babel. And the rest of it is loaded on a Task Force 123, which is at Hiroshima. And in Task Force 133 at Hiro Hiroshima. So there you go. Now we know. So of the 12 divisions that you start off with is Japan that are uh, unrestricted. One, two, three. Here, let me bring this over here. Oh, maybe that's too much. One, two, three, four, five of them are fully intact and can be used. The rest are loaded on task forces or geographically not located. All right, so it's up to you if you elect to put them back together or not. I will say I feel like they would have better fighting capability and it'd be administratively easier for you to track out, track where they're at if they were together, but you don't have to. You could leave them split up into their regiments and such. Now, I will tell you this. Once you combine them, you cannot split them into their individual regiments again. You can split them into thirds. So you can take the division and split into thirds, but you can't split up the individual regiments anymore. Okay. So I'll, I'll, let me explain to you what I mean. Do you see all these individual regiments here, for example, in, in this unit? You could not take this for, uh, eighth division and decide you want to split it back into regiments and then pull the engineers out, pull the recon regiment out. Once you combine it, you don't get to take them back apart. So once you make that decision to combine them, it's permanent. So make sure you decide if you want to do that or not. For There will be times where it may not be ideal to do that. For example, you want to keep the red uh, recon regiments separate or you want to keep the engineer regiments separate and the infantry regiments separate and let them fight that way in smaller battles indefinitely. Then that's fine. If that's your decision, do it. Um but if you want to use them in major operations, for example, uh, if you want to take Singapore, uh, this is a huge undertaking for the Japanese. It's, it's a shock attack, and you're going to have 4,500 AV of allied troops here. Now, they're not great troops, but they've got fortification, and you're shock attacking across a river for, you know, if you will. That's what the pink means. It treats it like a river. No, it's more of a straight. Uh, you're going to want your divisions fully intact to make that attack or they're going to suffer heavy casualties and will not be as effective okay so now that you know what your divisions are right it's up to you to decide how you want to employ them 
uh, a good way to do that is to look at where they're at and make a decision from there. Like, okay, well, the Imperial Guards Division is already um, here in Southeast Asia, so I could either rail them down into Malaya to assist with the battle there, or I could send them... Uh, I could send them further north into Rangoon or into Burma if you would if you wanted to do that okay so I like to use my little notepad here and I keep I keep notes okay so let's say um, use for Rangoon okay the second division split at Sendai um, to me it would make sense to use them possibly in the Philippines or in Malaya but that's a longer drive so these guys at 2nd Division would probably be really good to use on Luzon because it's not too far from here to there. Okay, so let's say you wanted to do that. So you just get out your little... <coughs> Excuse me. Uh, and then put use for Luzon. Okay, 4th Division at Osaka. Now you have a lot of options with this one. All right, it's in mainland Japan. You could use it here in the Philippines. You could use it down here. In Malaya, you could use it in Burma, or you could even ship it all the way down into the uh, into the Pacific, right? It's up to you. But I just want to show you what, what the kind of planning that you need to do when you start as a Japanese. You need to sit down right from the get-go before you make any task forces or do any moves and look at where all of your troops are at, right? Just like we're doing right now, and decide where they're going to go, and then you plan for that accordingly. Make that decision now so you don't do what I did and scatter them all over the place, all the individual pieces of all these units without realizing what they are and where they go. I'm going to do a separate video later on. Um, I'm going to do a separate video later on about this, which are the special move task forces. Do you see these task forces with the little asterisks, right? Uh, these task forces have special movement properties which allow them to, for lack of a better word or, or phrase, teleport all over the map with with caveats so you can magically appear somewhere else from where you're starting. And you only get this if you're doing a non-historical first turn. If you're playing a historical start, you don't get to decide where any of this goes. It goes where the game, uh, the scenario creators have decided they should go, and you just got to deal with it. Uh, if you're playing non-historical like I do and like most people do, you get control over that, and there's different things you can do to basically attach other task forces to these task forces, and then this one will drag it along. Again, that's a, a topic for another video. Again, the topic for this video is to make you aware of the divisions that you have when you play Japan, where they're at, and how you can use them. Uh, screenshot this here. Let me make it bigger for you guys if you want. Uh, screenshot this so you kind of know where everything's at. And then from there, you can decide what you want to do with it. Now, real quick before I end this video, if you play Scenario 2, which is the like semi-historical one, but where the, the Japanese get juiced up a bit with extra resources and things, that's what I'm playing right now because I, I suck and I need a crutch. Um, you get three additional divisions uh, as Japan. And these all will spawn as the 6th, the 4th, and the Guards Tank Division on these dates at Camran Bay, which I always just abbreviate as CRB. CRB is over here on the map in Southeast Asia, uh, present-day Vietnam. They all spawn there. And then from there, you can decide where you want to use them. I mean, this is a lot of power, okay? Uh, this is a lot. This is a substantial amount of firepower that you get here. You could use them in China. You can rail them up this way and use them in Burma. Or you can put them on a ship and send them into Java, Australia, whatever you want to do. Because they come unrestricted and able for you to use uh, right off the bat. Okay? You do not get these in Scenario 1. So in Scenario 1, this is all you get. And if you want more, you got to buy them with political points. And again, I, I've been meaning to do a video on political points and how they work and how you should use them. I'll get to that. But hopefully this helps you if you're a new Japan, Japan player like me and you need to know about your divisions and where they are and where they start. 
refer to this and it should help you out. I wish I had done this before I started setting up for my campaign at the beginning of the last one. I feel like I would have been more inclined to keep going even with the damage to the Akagi, the torpedo I took, the torpedoes I took, and the bad employment of Kido Butai. If my divisions were at least going where I wanted them to go, I probably would have just powered through it. But uh, between the, the Kido Butai being jacked and my divisions being scattered everywhere, I felt like I had a huge hurdle to overcome. And Helson saw that too and uh, offered to restart. And that's what we're going to do. But hope this helps. Uh, thank you for watching my videos. I always appreciate it. Hope this makes it easier for you if you're starting out like I am. And I'll catch you guys on the next one.